Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about glass cutting and more so the basic beginner techniques and some strategies to glass cutting um, that you can use to make glass art, such as this right here. This is an example of a that a student made. It's a bird um, and they used sheet glass to sheet glass like this to cut, um, they cut it various shapes um, such as triangles and circles and ovals and then assembled them onto one piece of sheet glass. Um, so yeah, this is a really, really good student example that I have here. And um, you'll see on my work surface here, I have a variety of materials laid out. Um, the first material that I wanna talk about here is this glass cutting mat that I have. Um, and this is just a cutting mat. Um, you can get them at most ordinary art stores, but it's really, really important to have a glass cutting mat. Not only does it protect the surface that we're working on, but it also protects the blade on your glass cutter, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. Um, so I'm gonna get a couple of these tools moved out of the way and we'll go through each tool just one by one. The very first tool I wanna to talk about and probably the most important tool is a good set of safety glasses. We only get one set of eyes um, and we want to protect them. So having a really nice pair of safety glasses is something you're going to want to have while you're cutting glass. The next tool I'd like to talk about is the actual glass cutters. Um, and you'll see I have two different styles of glass cutters here today. These are the most common um, styles of glass cutters that you'd probably see in your art classroom. Um, so we'll start off with this smaller green one here. This is called a pencil cutter. Um, Hence the name, it looks kind of like a pencil and you actually hold it just like a pencil when you're cutting glass. This is another style of glass cutter. This is called a pistol grip glass cutter um, and it has this larger shaped handle um, with some nice grips on here. And this is usually recommended for somebody who might have some strength issues in their hand um, or they just need a little more stability while they're cutting glass. And um, I often use both of both types of glass cutters. Um, I usually use the smaller one for more intricate details. Um, and then I'll use the bigger one when I'm cutting larger sheets of glass. So the way that a glass cutter works, it has a little tiny wheel at the very, very tip here, and you can kind of spin it with your finger. Um, be careful of them, they can be a little sharp, but it has this little tiny wheel and on the tip of this wheel, it comes to a point and um, that peak that it's at the top of the wheel is what's used to what we call score the glass. Um, I have an example of what it does here. You can see on this piece of sheet glass, I have this nice score mark. And what that peak is doing is, is putting, when you put downward pressure on the glass cutter, it's just putting all the pressure to that little point like that. And then it creates this line, which we're gonna break the glass on. So it's also important to know that when you're cutting glass, you need to cut glass at a specific angle. Um, so I really like the pencil cutter for this. Um, it's a great example of this angle. So you can see on the edge here, I have my wheel, and then I have a 45 degree angle on the tip of this glass cutter. And that's because you wanna always cut glass at a 45 degree. Um, so if you take your piece of glass, and I can show you here, um, you're gonna score it with that little wheel, right? And so when you go to put your um, cutter onto the glass, you can see that angle lines up perfectly. And so I like using the pencil cutter because I can just kind of ride the angle on the glass like that as I'm cutting it. I have a couple more tools I'd like to talk about really fast. Um, I have two types of pliers here. One is used for breaking glass and one is used for nibbling glass. So these are called grozing pliers and grozing means just to nibble. Um, so with the grozing pliers, what they do is you can just nibble off corners of glass. So it's really, really important to do this because glass can be so sharp. You can see on this one piece of purple glass here, I have four really, really sharp corners and the edges can also get really sharp as well. So we're gonna need to take important consideration when we're holding glass and handling it. Um, so what the grozing pliers do is you can actually round off these corners when you're cutting glass. Um, and you can do this by simply just using the very tip of the pliers and grabbing it and you're gonna pull down and away from the glass and it'll kind of just round it off. So you can see my corner went from a very sharp angular corner to a nice rounded corner. So that's what the grozer pliers are used for. 
Now these larger pliers here with the red handles, these are called running pliers, that's the technical term, but a lot of people refer to them as breaking pliers, and that's because they're used to, well, actually break glass. Um, so I'll show you how they work here a little bit. I have this score line that I was talking about earlier, so let's go ahead and try to break that glass onto that score line. Now there's um, one way to use the pliers and one way to not use the pliers. Um, you always wanna use the pliers facing up in the right direction. So you can see on these pliers, there's a little, um, it's an indicator, a little line on this side, and there's no line on this side. So we need to make sure we're always uh, breaking glass with that line facing up. So we'll go ahead and take our glass and with this line facing up, our pliers and we know our pliers are in the right direction. And you just kind of line that little line up with the line on your glass and just give it a little bit of squeeze. And you don't need much squeeze at all. And you can see it went ahead and broke right in half there. So those are the other two tools that we'll be using today. But right now I'd like to talk about, I'd like to go back to our glass cutters and talk about actually how you use them. So here you'll see I have a green piece of transparent glass laid out, which I think is really cool. And we'll go ahead and practice cutting this. So I'll start off by using the pencil cutter and I'm gonna hold it like a pencil. Um, and then I'll have my wheel on the end and I'm gonna follow that angle as I'm cutting the glass. Um, kind of show it a little better here, just like that. I hope you can see that. Um, so we'll go ahead and cut it. When you're cutting glass, you need to make sure and be careful of that you're not just kind of rubbing your hands all over. Um, glass, when you cut it, it does create little tiny, tiny shards and your eye can't always see the little shards of glass. Um, so it's, it's, always, it's always important to just kind of be cautious of what you're grabbing and where you're putting your hands. So you can cut glass by either pushing away from you or pulling towards you. Um, I use both techniques. Um, so I'll go ahead and just pull towards me for the sake of the video here. Um, and I'm gonna be applying just some even downward pressure to the very, very tip of this glass cutter and following that angle. And when I'm applying the pressure, I wanna make sure I'm not only applying with the pressure using just my wrist, but I wanna be using my entire arm while I'm applying the pressure. So I'll go ahead and place my glass cutter down, starting at the edge of the glass. And I'm gonna, it's gonna take a little bit of pressure, but I'll put some pressure on it and drag my glass cutter back and it'll create a nice even score line. Um, I want you to listen for a specific sound while I'm making the score line. You know it's scoring properly when you hear this sound and you'll get used to hearing it, but it sounds to me kind of like Velcro being torn apart slowly. So I'll go ahead and put some pressure on the glass starting at the edge and just drag back. So I hope you could hear that sound. And you can see my score mark on there. And I'll go ahead and use the pistol grip one. And I, sometimes I like using this one when I'm cutting bigger sheets because I feel like I can apply a little more pressure and it cuts a little easier. So I'll go ahead and use this one and this time I'll push away from me. So just starting at the edge again, a little bit of pressure and I'm holding my glass cutter at that 45 degree angle and just making that nice noise that sounds like Velcro being torn apart. So you can see I have two um, scores on my glass now. So we'll go ahead and take our breaking pliers and line our mark up, just like that. And it doesn't take very much, but just a little squeeze. And you can see the glass broke right off. Now it didn't break off exactly how I wanted to, and that's okay because it's just gonna take some practice. But we'll go ahead and go ahead and break this other piece now that I did with the pistol grip. And you can see that one broke perfectly, right down my score line. So don't feel like, um, don't feel upset if you don't get it right away. It does take a little bit of practice and the scoring kind of take, the scoring process and it takes a little bit of practice to get nice even straight lines, um, but you'll get there eventually. So um, with all that information, I didn't want to throw too much at you. Um, but I hope it was simple enough and you were able to gather some information out of the video that's useful. Um, I have three more small tips for you as a beginner glass cutter, and that's to have a nice Sharpie. Um, 
you can write really well with Sharpie on glass, and so drawing lines that you can practice following on glass can be really helpful when learning. A ruler is always a good tool to make some nice straight angular lines. And lastly, Elmer's glue works really, really good for bonding glass together. So after you cut out all your shapes and you want to make a bird, for example, using a little bit of Elmer's glue to, to kind of bind the um, little pieces of glass together until they can melt in the kiln is going to be a lifesaver for you. Glass is a really, really fun material. It's made from natural raw materials such as like sand. Um, and it, what I really like about the art medium is it doesn't disturb the natural environment or cause anything um, negative towards the environment. So for that reason, it's a super, super sustainable choice that you can use in your art classroom.